in organizational change part 2 i will be discussing about organizational life cycle and change the learning objective is here uh, why to appreciate the problems involved in surviving the perils of organizational birth and what founders can do to help their new organization survive. So, here basically I would like to emphasize on the organizations which were doing very well in the past and uh, because of the uh, environmental pressures they were not able to or because of some internal turmoil they were not able to cope up and they are not no more existing. I would like to quote the names of some organizations which were uh, doing very well in the past like Kingfisher Airlines. Then uh, uh, Satyam uh, which is now re-christianed as Mahindra Satyam. Then several organizations like uh, Suviksha which was a brand name and uh, in the retail market segment, but today it is not no more existing. Similarly, there is Alvin watches and then HM, uh, Hindustan motors and uh, there are also uh, HMT watches and so on. These are these, these were uh, big names in the past and they have faced with some external factors of change or external forces of change and they could not sustain and survive. So, our intention to learn in this chapter is to know exactly what are the factors which an organization faces or how the organization processes in the various life cycle stages and what changes, what factors uh, or what crisis it encounters in each, each of these stage and then describe the typical problems that arise as an organization grows and matures and how an organization must change it uh, if, if it is it has to survive and prosper. So, we will be discussing about each stage of uh, like the growth, decline, maturity stage. We will be discussing about the uh, all these stages in more details and discuss why organizations decline occurs, identify the stages of decline and how managers can manage or can change their organization to prevent failure and eventual death or dissolution. Organizational to start with organizational life cycle stages, it is very analogous to human life cycle stages. Organizational life cycle is a predictable sequence of stages of growth and change. The four principal stages of organizational life cycle is birth, growth, decline and death. So, as I told you it is analogous to the human life cycle stages in the birth stage or in the initial stages the organization has uh, uh, different challenges compared to the growth, decline and death stage. The growth stage there are again the competitive pressure is more in the decline stage when the organization or otherwise we say it is a mature stage where the organization has, uh, has been working very well and it has uh, established itself in terms of its brand name and identity, but still the challenge is more even intense and if it is not able to withstand the challenge, if it is not able to address to those challenges, then the organization would die. So, a model of organizational life cycle in the life cycle stages on one axis and organizational effectiveness on the other axis, we can see that the organization uh, is uh, moving through various ebbs and flows in the organizational birth, growth, decline and death stage there are different challenges. So, birth stage the founding of an organization when the organization is just beginning to take baby steps in the market. So, occurs when entrepreneurs take advantage of opportunities to use their skills and competencies to create value. As we know that today uh, there is an ample scope for growth for the new entrepreneurs, new, new ventures keep coming up every day. So, in the initial stage they have various uh, teething problems, a dangerous life cycle stage associated with greatest chances of failure and uh, liability of newness is the danger associated with the with being the first in the new environment. When the banks uh, uh, came with the concept of ATM, uh, the challenge was intense for the first bank which came with the concept of ATM because it was just venturing into a new environment 
a new organization is fragile because it lacks a formal structure. I would like to quote another example of when Bisleri, the bottled water concept came into India. It was a kind of entrepreneurial venture in the, in the market which had never tasted the, which had never accepted a concept of bottled water. So, a new organization is fragile because it lacks a formal structure and there is a liability of newness. Organizational birth, develop, developing a plan for new business. So, the challenge before ma marketer, the challenge before or, uh, the management is how to develop a plan for new business begins with an entrepreneur notices an opportunity. So, first step is opportunity identification to develop a new or improved product or service. When you have launched your product in the market, you should try to do some newness or innovation in the product or services. Detol was a well established brand when it came. So, it was known in the segment of uh, say uh, the Detol, uh, Detol liquid and or Detol soap. But hand sanitizer concept was new in the market. So, when it launched the hand sanitizer in the market, people it had to educate people, it had to communicate with the with the, the audience, communicate with the customers about that idea of hand sanitizer and how it can be useful. So, test the feasibility of the new product idea through SWOT analysis, strength, weakness, opportunities, and threat analysis examine the strength and weakness of the idea. You need to test whether what is the strength of the product and what is the weakness of the idea through that SWOT analysis decide whether the new product idea is feasible or not. And so, the plan should include statement of organization's mission, goal and financial objective, statement of organizational strategic objective list of the functional and organizational resources required to implement the idea. Timeline that contains, so it should also have the timeline that should contain milestones used to measure progress of the venture. How do we develop a business plan? Notice a product opportunity and develop a basic business idea, goods or service, customers or market, conduct a SWOT analysis, identify opportunities, identify threats strengths, weaknesses, develop whether the business opportunity is feasible or not. So, as in the case of hand sanitizer, then the Detol had to verify whether this hand sanitizer concept will work well or not. So, as people were not aware, so they had to uh, through various advertising campaigns, through various uh, communication strategies, they had to tell uh, or they had to explain that this is a sanitizer which will help you to or which will be useful in a place where there is water scarcity. When there is no water, you can still get your hands or make your hands clean. So, decide whether the opportunity is feasible or not, whether it is viable, possible or not, what is the cost benefit analysis. So, prepare a detailed business plan and uh, state with a statement of mission, goals and financial objectives, statement of the strategic that is plan of action, strategic objectives and list of necessary resources. Organizational timeline of events that means, how much time would be required to develop the idea to product develop the product and make it marketable, make it available in the market. So, a complete timeline need to be planned. Population ecology model of organizational birth. So, there are several theories behind organizational birth and one such theory is population ecology theory, which states that the factors that affect the rate at which new organizations are born and die in a population of existing organizations, population the organizations are competing for the same set of resources. So, that means, there is a intense competition within a segment within a sector. So, only those organizations would strive, would sustain and survive which is fit or which is strategically fit and which has offered something, uh, offered product or services which are innovative, which is starkingly different from the or which is having a distinct competitive advantage. So, particular sets of resources or skills. So, population ecology model, uh, it uh, emphasizes on the 
number of births determined by availability of resources, uh, availability factors that produce a rapid birth rate, availability of knowledge and skills to generate similar new organizations, new organizations provide role models and confer legitimacy. As the environment is populated with a number of successful organizations, first mover advantage benefits derived from being an early entrant into the new environment like in the case of bacillary being a first entrant. Difficulty of competing with the existing companies, uh, the new companies find it difficult to compete with the existing, existing companies because of their earlier existing brand names like re when Reliance uh, uh, Geo came, Geo uh, was launched, Geo was giving services for free to uh, bring in more customer because the market was earlier, market was already saturated with other service providers like BSNL and uh, the uh, Vodafone and uh, Airtel and so on. So, it had to create, to create a name in that market which is all, uh, which is uh, completely saturated, it is very difficult for a new entrant. So, survival strategies, so organization takes up different survival strategies like that, uh, that can uh, help in gaining competitive, that can cause to gain access to resources and enhance their chances of survival, then uh, specialist and generalist strategy like uh, organizations that concentrate their skills to pursue a narrow range of resources in a niche area, organizations that spread their skills uh, to compete in a broad range of resources in many niches. Then uh, so natural selection process, the process th that ensures that survival of organization can have the skills and abilities that best fit the environment. Over time, weaker organizations die because they cannot adapt their procedures to fit to the change in the environment. Natural selection is a competitive process, is a law of nature. So, the survival of, of fittest, the company which is able to give a viable solution in a competitive market which is serving the needs of the customers which meets the or which provides value to the customers in terms of pro profit, in terms of its products and services would earn a competitive advantage. Organizational growth, the life cycle stage in which organizations develop value creation, value creation skills and competencies that allow them to acquire additional resources. They can develop competitive advantage by increasing division of labor, by creating surplus resources that fosters greater growth. Then uh, institutional theory which states that studies how organization can increase their ability to grow and survive in a competitive environment by becoming legitimate in the eyes of the stakeholder. And uh, institutional environment means values and norms in an environment that governs the behavior of population. Then model of organizational growth. There are different stages of organizational growth, five sequential growth strategies, each stage results in some stage of crisis. Growth through creativity, entrepreneurs develop the skills to create and introduce new products, organizational learning occurs, crisis of leadership, entrepreneurs may lack management skills. Then uh, in the stage 2, crisis of leadership results in recruitment of top management who take on responsibility for organization strategy. Then there is a crisis of autonomy. That means, creative people lose control over new product development, professional managers run the show, decision making becomes centralized. Growth through delegation, to solve the crisis of autonomy, managers must delegate. When uh, the top managers or when the decision making becomes centralized, at that time there is a crisis which occurs. So, the organization should try to delegate power to the other managers must there, there must be delegation of power to strike a balance between the need of uh, need for professional management and opportunity for entrepreneurship. Crisis of control is power struggle over resource emerge between top level and lower level of management growth through coordination. In the next stage then the organization grows through coordination to resolve crisis of control and managers must find right balance of centralized and decentralization. Top management takes on role of coordinating different divisions, 
crisis of red tapeism say there is a increasing reliance on rules red tapeism is basically when the organization relies too much on rules and regulations so reliance on rules and regulations and standard procedure there is a highly bureaucracy the high level of bureaucracy which will again be a barrier to the growth organization becomes overly bureaucratic and stifles the way of entrepreneurship so what we discussed so far is there are various stages of crisis which may emerge in each uh, cycle of growth of an organization it may be because of the uh, growth through delegation growth through direction and also it can be through in the coordination phase in the collaboration phase emphasizes greater spontaneity in management action social control self discipline take over formal control greater use of product team and metric structure there is a um, collaboration makes uh, use makes an organization more organic which can be difficult task so the overall model appears to be like uh, when the organization is growing in the area age of organization on the x axis and if you look at the size of organization on the y axis so when an organization is new or a new born baby so there are uh, the organization is young and it is in the entrepreneurial stage as it grows there is a, the leader the growth through there in the first phase there is a growth through creativity there is more of, uh, openness more creativity emphasized on as it becomes larger in size so the the leader uh, becomes prominent the control is exercised the and the organization is in the hands of the founder who and uh, because of excessive control of the founder there is more centralization and there is crisis of leadership further uh, th then there emerges the need for delegation of power and when there is delegation of power then after that stage there is a growth through delegation and then coordination there are too much of uh, problem with the coordination and growth through collaboration so there are various uh, problems that encounter that an organization encounters in each stage one is crisis for leadership crisis for creativity crisis due to autonomy direction when there is uh, say the organization has delegated the power then there is there is no clear direction being uh, uh, being provided and then there is a prob problem of coordination and collaboration which will lead to different phases of crisis and which need to be uh, taken care of by organization so these factors the crisis for leadership crisis for uh, delegation which will lead to some kind of you know inertia so uh, which will lead to organizations decline the life cycle stage that an organization enters when it fails to anticipate recognize avoid neutralize or adapt to external or internal pressures that threaten its long term survival it may occur because organizations grow too much when there is excessive growth so organizational decline and death is inevitable is inevitable so effectiveness and profitability uh, assessing organization's effectiveness involves comparing its profitability relative to others profitability measures how a, well a company is making use of its resources by investing them in ways to create goods and services and then uh, finally uh, the organizational inertia the forces inside make the organization uh, make it resistant to change and there is risk aversion managers become unwilling to bear the uncertainty of change as the organization grows so there is always a rift within the organization the desire to maximize rewards managers may increase the size of the company and uh, they, uh, their own rewards even though the, when the growth reduces so which can reduces organizational effectiveness inertia could be due to bureaucratic culture that is highly bureaucratic rules regulations can also sometimes become barriers to the organization's growth property rights can uh, large organizations can become so strong that organizations uh, the managers spend all their time protecting their special specific the uh, protecting their culture instead of working to advance for the organization uncertain and changing organizations affect organizations ability to obtain scarce resources they are leading to decline and thereby leading to decline make it difficult for top management to anticipate the need for change and to manage the way organizations change and adapt to environment 
There are five stages in the decline process that is blinded, inaction, faulty action, crisis and dissolution. And uh, these uh, five stages are basically the blinded stages organizations are not able to recognize the internal or external problems. Inaction means despite clear signs of deteriorating performance, top management takes little action and uh, ignores the problems, the signals and uh, does not take any corrective action. And faulty actions are managers may have made wrong decisions and because of the infighting within the top management team or because of group decision making uh, failures, the organization may have uh, may not have uh, made right decision, corrective decision. So, some faulty actions are being taken and crisis by the time this stage has arrived only radical changes in the strategy and structure can stop the decline. So, crisis is a phase where the organization must change completely or radically or transform from one status quo to a dif different status quo. Dissolution, decline is irreversible and the organization cannot recover. So, last stage is where the organization is not able to do anything and they have to meet the organization has to meet its ultimate destiny. So, what we uh, ha have understood is effectiveness is measured in terms of product, production, quality, efficiency, competitiveness, development, survival, then customer satisfaction, employee satisfaction. So, successful implementation of change is required for managing organizational efficiency and effectiveness. Both efficiency and effectiveness can lead to organizational growth profitability, productivity, employee satisfaction, customer satisfaction or otherwise it is called organizational success. So, what we have learnt is an organization faces different stages of crisis right from its birth to death. The first stage is called the initial stage of uh, when an organization is just growing, it is a growth stage then uh, it is a in the first stage is uh, birth, growth, decline and death. So, in the birth stage there are some teething problems, the organization is new in the environment, it, does, it, it does not have a brand name. So, there the effort of manager, manager or the organization or the management has to give emphasis on creating an impact in the market with value creation ability by leveraging on the strengths or core competitive core competence in order to create competitive advantage. Once the organization has established itself in the market that is in the growth phase, the organization is picking up its uh, or is gaining recognition and uh, it is recognized amongst the peer group or in the in the in that industry or the sector with its uh, with the new products and services with the value it has provided to the customers and when it reaches the maturity stage, in the maturity stage the challenges are again many because the product is well established and there are competitors which have offered innovative services, innovative solutions. So, if an organization does not change in each of these stage, it will not, it will not be able to again sustain and survive. So, in each stage there is a need, there is some kind of internal or external crisis which an organization encounters. So, some somewhere it is facing problems of problem of uh, growth through direction, the problems of creativity uh, growth or uh, like there is a problem of leadership issue or delegation or maybe the coordination issue or collaboration. So, it has to manage effectively each and every stage, each and every challenge in such a manner that overall the organization effectively and efficiently functions. Thank you.